Hey all, Meerkat here. Uh, just wanted to talk about um, the marathon strats that we're doing for Backyard Baseball. Um, looking to potentially get this in as a race for GDQ with uh, TI Kevin 83. Um, did some uh, did some races earlier today with him. Kind of want to just talk about uh, the reasons we did the strats that we did, um, and uh, kind of the kind of the overall strats of the run itself. Um, it's a pretty interesting run. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, st and start it off. Um, first off, uh, there's not really a there's well it's paused. Um, so the game options that we use, um, we go to Steel Stadium because uh, as you can see from the picture here, um, you can't see my mouse cursor, uh, but. Um, the center field fence is very far in. Um, if you hit it over that center field fence or uh, onto the shed in right center field, uh, on top of the shed, it's a home run. Um, so that's a pretty quick run. Uh, and we only need one run, only need to get one run. Uh, usually it, it, can be, it can be problematic sometimes. Um, but it's a lot more manageable on Steel Stadium than anywhere else. Uh, as for game options, um, we would be running, if we did GDQ, we would be running six inning, um, six inning with pitching. Uh, even though it has a little more RNG than T-ball, uh, it's much more enjoyable to watch in my opinion. Um, I think most people would agree with that. No one really wants to watch T-ball. Um, we also have a lot of the sounds off. The only one I keep on is uh, is ambient noise um, stuff like the music and the, especially the commentary uh, slows the game down a lot uh, as enjoyable as it is to listen to uh, unfortunately the game will take twice as long with it and for being a for being a speed run um, we want to show off the speed run for GDQ it's not you know it's not a let's play so um, other than that uh, let me think, is there anything else that I need to mention before I get started? Um, so normally what we would do uh, is we would hit, we would just hit play ball and it would automatically pick the team. Um, for, for the case that we're doing, um, we would be picking the team beforehand. Um, kind of not, it, it's basically to kind of minimize RNG because when we play when we play for the world record we try to get the you know we'll just reset runs over and over to try to get a better team and try to skip team picking i think the the rules actually state that team picking is not allowed and that you have to go through and actually play the game or just hit play ball um but um for for marathon strats we would hit create team um now we would be setting our uh, our time for about, we would think it would be about 22 minutes, it would be about the top end of how long it would take for both Kevin and I to finish. Um, now, that's not to say that, um, that it could be faster. Uh, it certainly can, as I'll show off in this video. Um, however, uh, that's about that's about the high end of where of where we've been seeing our runs for uh, for the most part. Um, if we now what we can do is we can skip team picking and we can just auto load something for GDQ. In which case, uh, in which case we can drop a couple minutes off. Plus, we would already have our optimal team uh, set and ready to go. Um, so, if that's the case, uh, we would probably be asking for about it would probably be about twenty minutes is about the longest it would take. And with super good RNG, it could take 10. It could take, it could legitimately just take 10 minutes. Um, but the, the game, the game's crazy. Uh, I'm going to kind of show, I'm going to kind of show off it. It's, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun little game. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people who don't really know video games remember Backyard Baseball very well. Uh, if you go on Twitter, you search Backyard Baseball, you'll just see people be like, when are they making backyard baseball for android or what are they making remaking backyard baseball um so this is a this is a big game uh for 
for a lot of people, and I think that a lot of people would really appreciate seeing it at GDQ. Anyways, uh, let's get started with the uh, with the video here. So we start. Uh, what we're doing here, we we're starting with team picking. Uh, I immediately uh, pick pink because pink is the only color that actually matters for any player, and that's for Maria Luna. Uh, you can see her on the far right with the uh, with the dress and the bow. Um, I don't know if I pick her for this run. Um, it's just nice to have in case it gets down to that point. All of her. Uh, oops. I turned down volume here. Uh, so what? Uh, so for uh, for Maria, her stats actually boost. Um, if she is wearing pink uniform, uh, so it's nice to have, uh, but she's still not one of the absolute best, uh, that is out there. I'm just gonna, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna mute it. Um, so, uh, a lot of these players, you can see, I picked Pablo Sanchez, everyone knows Pablo Sanchez, he's pretty darn good. For speedrunning purposes, he's not the best, uh, but I would rather have him on my team than on their team, because he seems to be better f with the computer for some weird reason. Um, okay, so I did take Maria with my last pick, but I took a lot of uh, a lot of good players here. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually putting all of my uh, best hitters at the bottom of the lineup because that way, if I need to, uh, if I haven't gotten a run by the end of the sixth inning, uh, by the sixth inning, then I can reload a save and just uh, just try pulling to try to get uh, um, try to get home runs with all of my best all of my best players. So Pablo, Ahmed, Keisha are my best hitters. Um, by doing that, uh, that's 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 the optimal strat. Um, so in this case, I have Pete Wheeler going up. Um, he's he's a power hitter. Um, so for pitching, uh, okay. So you see, I did a timeout there. So what that does, and you'll see that uh, probably again here because I have issues hitting with Pete. Uh, never mind. Um, so with timeout, if the pit, if the ball is being thrown from the catcher to the pitcher, if you hit timeout and you go back in, that animation is skipped. Um, so you kind of saw it there. I I did an automatic. I just did a strikeout just to get to the next hitter. It saves time um, instead of trying to hit the ball in play and just keep hitting foul balls. It loses so much time. Um, it's better to just move on to the next hitter. Um, so what I, what you try to do is you try to just try to get a run as soon as possible. And once you get a run. Um, then you don't even you don't even have to worry uh, you don't even have to worry about getting into the run so you just try to get outs as fast as possible now that's easier said than done because it's uh, you know you have to you have to worry about the you know getting pitches over the plate you have to worry about hitting the ball in play and then once you hit the ball in play you gotta worry about the computer actually doing what you want it to do it's it's crazy it's nuts um, kind of kind of interesting uh, to uh, to see um, from a from someone's perspective who hasn't really played the game. So here I'm pitching. Uh, I have Luann Louis pitching. Um, what's nice about Luann and uh, she dropped the ball there. What's nice about Luann um, is that a she's fast and b uh, she has a very good uh, fastball, the heat, um, and c uh, her her pitching animation is pretty quick. Now there are a lot of animations that aren't that aren't quick. Um, so, like, Pablo Sanchez, even though he's actually a really good pitcher for the purposes of a speed run, um, you would think, uh, unfortunately he has a really, really slow, uh, um, a really slow animation for pitching, uh, so we don't usually like to use Pablo for pitching that much. Um, so that, ca that case I just got a double play, a big deal, um, it's a good thing. So, uh, you can see there, uh, there was a thing called an elevator pitch that uh, Kenny threw. So there's a uh, there's a few special pitches that can be thrown. Um, elevator is one of them. Uh, it's random whichever uh, whichever pitch you get. Basically, when you throw a strikeout, you get a special pitch. Um, so when we do these automatic strikeouts, unfortunately, the uh, opponent gets some special pitches. So, so with Luan, uh, Luan doesn't really have a lot of power, so it's not worth trying to go for a home run with her. So we just go for a ground, we just go for a quick out, um, pretty pretty easy for the most part. Uh, grounders usually work pretty well. Depends on the batter. Some batters have if you miss uh, if you miss the ball, they have such a long swing animation uh, that it's more worth it to just bunt. Um, speaking of animations with with batters, I should mention there are a few batters such as Pablo Sanchez, Reese Worthington, Maria Luna, uh, Stephanie Morgan 
who, if you come back from timeout, uh, they will, um, they'll have, uh, this thing, uh, where they'll have, like, a little animation right when you come back from timeout. Um, and you can see I'm saving here. Um, it's important to save pretty often because if they get a home run, it's a lot of time lost. Uh, so we try to, we try to minimize that by at the bottom of every inning, and then if we need to at the top of the sixth inning, uh, to just save every time. Um, saves, you know, if they get, if they get a run and you're behind, it sucks. It really sucks. Um, so, uh, you can see here, uh, I'm pitching pretty well. Amir just keeps fouling the ball off, and then he f finally just hits the ball in play, and it's a ground rule double. This actually loses a little bit of time, but the nice thing about this is that they don't score. Um, uh, a lot of animations can be skipped with the escape key. Um, unfortunately, ground rule doubles and home runs by the opponent uh, cannot get skipped. Uh, so you have to watch them run around the bases. Now, your own home runs you can skip, um, and I'll I'll show that uh, when we get to that point. Um, and you can see this at this point I didn't use it. I don't use the timeout strat with Ronnie here because his uh, animation is just so long. It's just faster to just leave it um, to to not use the timeout strat because the ball's already back to Luan, and I can just throw it. Um, then he. Does a bunt. That's always frustrating. So, uh, so you can kind of see here, uh, um, what when you throw between players, sometimes the opponent will like to run. Um, the opponents are not good base runners, and so you can just catch them in run downs like this. This is a little bit of time, but the out is more important than the time loss for the most part. So, um, it's nice when they bunt because then they can't hit homers. So um, I really didn't need to save there, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you can see the animation coming back from timeout here uh, that Pablo has. Um, so I don't hit the power right away. I only hit the power once the animation for the pitcher starts. Uh, because because if you hit uh, any button, so if you hit uh, the stance button, uh, one of the power line drive buttons, whatever, um, if you hit any of those, and here's the home run by Pablo, uh, so I'll come back to that in a second. I just want to talk about So I can skip the animation here for Pablo uh, to run around the bases. Basically, all I have to do, I have to wait for the ball to stop bouncing in the background. Uh, so there will be a little, yep, there's a little uh, feet notification that pops up. About five seconds after that, uh, three to five seconds, um, and I save here. About three to five seconds after that, you can, uh, when you hit the escape key, um, it's uh, it'll just... Um, bring you to the next hitter so uh that's a that's a little bit of a time save over what you would normally get um what i was talking about earlier the uh, uh if you hit one of the stance buttons or uh, one of the hit buttons so power line drive ground or bunt um it actually resets the counter for how long the uh the pitcher will uh take to pitch the ball so it takes about like three to five seconds for them to pitch and uh and so if you wait about two seconds before they start their windup, and then you hit the power button that uh, or the line drive button, then it'll reset. And so you hit the reset, and, and so it resets, and then you have to wait another three to five seconds. And so it's just a time loss. Um, you can see Kenny's got three strikeouts here, and so he's got a few uh, uh, pitches up his sleeve. Now, you can't use them forever. Um, so the, the special pitches, you can't use them forever. And they... Uh, take uh, they take a bit of juice so you see that you can see the juice on the right side of the screen there um, when you're pitching uh, so the juice basically is like how much energy your pitcher has uh, the lower the juice the um, you can see the shadow of the pitch grows um, and that shadow is basically anywhere in that shadow the pitch can go so it's nice it's better to have a smaller one so that you can more uh, more specifically choose your spots because you don't want to accidentally throw it over the middle of the plate. That sucks. Um, you can actually regain your juice. Your juice regains a little bit uh, after every half inning so you go back to where you were. Um, or uh, there, if you get a strikeout, there's uh, instead of getting a special pitch, sometimes you'll get a thing called more juice and it'll just refill your juice back to the top. Um, so sometimes what I like to do in that situation is I like to use my cr crazy pitches then when I have a more juice available. 
uh, kind of push my juice down and then uh, use the more juice and it just goes back to the top. Um, so uh, right now just getting ground outs, uh, trying to get ground outs for the most part. Um, not, it, you know, it's usually not that big of a deal. Uh, ground outs, uh, some, some batters I'll use bunts. Uh, Ronnie Dobbs is one of those players where, where I'll use a bunt. Um, he's not a very good hitter, but he's a very good pitcher. So if you have him on your team, uh, then you can use him to pitch, uh, which I don't have him on my team here. Um, so, uh, so it's not really a big deal. Um, he's probably one of the few. Uh, Maria, I would normally have bunt, but when she when she is wearing pink, uh, she's a lot better at hitting. Uh, so I don't have to worry about that either uh, in this case. Um, you can see some of the players have very long swing animations. You see Sally takes a very long time to get her, uh, to get her swing back. I kind of talked about that earlier with uh, Ronnie on their team as well. Um, there's a few uh, player-specific things that I should probably mention. Um, so uh, I mentioned that uh, Maria plays better in pink. She's the only player that plays better in a certain color or worse. Um, now, some players uh, play better with certain other players on their team. So, for example, um, uh, Amir, Amir Khan plays better with his brother Ahmed on the team, which is really nice because both of those guys are really good. And Amir becomes, like, legendary with, <laughs> with uh, Ahmed on his team. Um, Ronnie Dobbs uh, plays worse with his sister Sally on the team, uh, which usually isn't a big deal because... They both stink. Uh, Ronnie being the exception when he pitches. Ronnie is the best pitcher for speedruns because he has a very fast pitch. Uh, he has a very uh, accurate pitch, um, and his animation is fantastically fast. Uh, he has the best animation uh, for pitching in the game. I believe it's 0.3 seconds. Um, it's very short. Um, so, trying to think. Um, oh, as well, uh, the Weber sisters, Ashley and Sydney, um, they have the, uh, if they're on the same team, they also have all of their stats go up as well. Um, so the game, the game is very interesting from how it stands from a speedruns, uh, perspective. Um, so basically you like never want Sally Dobbs on your team. You never want, there's a few players you never want on your team because they stink. There's bad, um, you know, they don't make good contact. They're slow. They're bad fielders. Um, they have long animations. Um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, Sally's, Sally's one of those characters. Ronnie is a character where he would normally be terrible except for the fact that he's a good pitcher. Otherwise, we would never pick him. Um, Luann uh, is a good enough player in her own right that it's more worth picking her up first, um, in my opinion at least. Uh, I don't know if Kevin would agree with that, but I would rather have Luann on my team uh, than Ronnie, so I would pick her up first, because at least then she can be pitcher. Um, other things, uh, at first base, um, you want a tall player at first base. Uh, even if I have airs turned off, which I do here, um, short players, uh, they can have uh, unforced airs. Basically, the ball can be thrown over their head. Um, that actually happened here. That's... That rarely happens, that the ball gets thrown over a medium to tall player's head. That never happens. That's the first time I've seen that in, like, I probably have seen that, like, two or three times over the course of all of my runs of backyard baseball. I've had probably over 500 runs. It's, ha it, you know, it happens less than 1% of the time, so, in a game. So, it happens less than 1% of the time per game, um... So it's a it's a very rare occurrence. Uh, whereas if you have a short player, it'll happen a lot more a lot more frequently. It's very uh, I wasn't actually planning for that uh, for that to happen while I was talking about it. But um, so if uh, if there was a um, if there was a short player there, say Pablo, uh, Dante Robinson, Luan, um, those sorts of players, uh, it's a very bad idea to have them uh, pitch or to play first base because the ball might go over their heads. Um, so that's the bottom of the sixth inning. So what happens here is that we call time as soon as the last out is up, which is going to be coming up um, pretty soon here. There's three outs that you have to get. 
Um, so, I, yep, there was a more juice there. I used it uh, basically to get a more accurate pitch. Um, not really the biggest deal in the world, uh, but, you know, it's nice to have. So then time is there. Uh, it was 15.02. That's a, that's a pretty decent time uh, for what we're doing. Um, like I said, normally we would be, like, resetting, like, all the time. Uh, 15 is a very good time for... Uh, for marathon strats, I would say. Uh, I would say that, like I said, it'd be about 22 minutes if we were picking teams, and about 20 without uh, picking teams. Uh, I'm just going to pause the video. There's not really any point to letting it continue. Um, this this run in particular, I, uh, we were doing race. Uh, Kevin and I were doing races, and this run was probably our closest. Um, it came down, we were both in the bottom of the last inning, and uh, RNG kind of hit Kevin hard. Uh, you know, unfortunate, but it's the name of the game, and really anyone can, like, anyone can win. Uh, you know, I could have lost to, you know, I, I did lose to Kevin a couple times, uh, even though uh, if you look at our times on speedrun.com, like, all of my times are better than all of Kevin's times. Um, I'm second uh, in the world for, uh, for the sixth inning, which is this. Um, I only lost it last week. I had it for like six or seven months before that, um, and Kevin is probably, I would say he's the second best right now. Uh, his six inning time is right around this, I think he's third place, but I think he's like two or three seconds behind second place, um, and his nine inning time is, uh, like he's had nine inning time games where his six innings were sub 10 minutes, um, which is extremely good. There's only... Only me and one other guy have done that in a six-inning run, um, and he's the only guy who's done it in a nine-inning. So it's uh, me and Kevin, we're pretty good competition. Uh, we got along pretty well. I think that we would make a good team. Uh, a, I think it would be a good race for GDQ. I hope that the GDQ staff agrees with that. Um, if they have any uh, – I'm going to be submitting this video to GDQ. If you have any questions about anything regarding this run, please feel free to uh, contact me. Um, you have my information. Uh, uh, let me think if there's anything else that needs to be said. I don't think so. Uh, really, uh, like I said, this is a popular game among, uh, among casual gamers, I would say. And I think it would be a really good spot for GDQ. So, uh, that's all I got. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you're one of my uh, regular watchers, I'll see you next time.